Okay. Number two, you still haven't answered the question. I'm, I'm trying but to. Wh why? It's a complicated answer. B black people are only 13% of the population, yet they commit 55% of the murders. Why? Because black people tend to be in lower economic statuses because of compli because of okay. no, no, this CRT. Is fine. This is great. Basically. So you think that poverty equals crime? I think that it's um, highly correlated, and there's ah, a lot of studies This is where we that. disagree. What an insult to the working poor so of this why country. Do you think hey guys, my name is Devore Darkins, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing an actual reaction, um, and it's on actual black issues uh, today, and it's with Charlie Kirk versus liberal students at a university. Which university? I have no idea. But if you don't know who Charlie Kirk is, he's the owner founder of Turning Point USA. It's a conservative movement that goes to all the universities and, and tries to educate and teach people on conservative values and how it will actually further everybody's life in a positive way. Anyway, I digress. Uh, he always runs into usually someone who thinks they know more than he does because they're in college and they're reading books. And so they just assume they know black issues. They understand why black people have these issues. And usually it's not even black people saying that. It's usually white people actually saying that. So I find this video to be actually funny. I, uh, a lot of irony in there. Um, and uh, I think there's a lesson in here that we all can take away um, that will help us have the right mindset about our own lives moving forward, regardless of the color of your skin. And without further ado, you know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's play the video. So what is whiteness? What is whiteness? Yeah, define it. As Kimberly Crenshaw would probably say, the sort of construction of privilege that comes with being white in this country. Right, so what what privilege do you and I as white people have that black people don't have? Yeah, great question. Um, on applications that are blindly judged, white sounding names are often given the job more, they're paid Not more. Not true. In fact, it's the opposite. There's black privilege right now. It's called affirmative action. Hmm. We're underqualified blacks. All right, so let's stop it here because I already know some people are going to disagree with this. Right now, what is happening is that corporations have been discriminating against white people. Yeah, I said that. They have been discriminating against white people. Like if there's a black candidate and a white candidate, as of today, we gotta go with, with the black candidate. It doesn't even matter if they are not qualified. We gotta go with them because we have this DEI program and we have to hire a certain amount of black people. And this has been proven over and over and over again. This doesn't work, by the way. And, and number two, it actually makes black people look worse. Because now what's happening is, okay, did that person, because they're black, did they get hired because they really did deserve that? Or did they get hired because they're part of some program that is trying to give uh, black people these jobs, r regardless if they are uh, qualified or not? It's not a good look for black people. And this is, I talk about this all the time. We do it to ourselves as black people. We become the very thing that we are fighting against. We say we fight against racism, but then we become racist. Why? because we don't want to hire any white men, any white men Christians, right? White male, white, white male Christians are, are evil today, right? That's how it's looked at right now, especially in these DEI programs. So uh, it's, just, it's just people need to truly do their research. Oh yeah, there's black privilege, not white privilege I in this I actually don't think affirmative action is how we address in education inequality. Okay, well that affirmative action was lar is still largely supported by the CRT regime. But let's get back to CRT, to the essence of it. Sure. CRT believes in one manifestation of its ideology is black only dormitories. So white people are not allowed. Do you believe in black only dormitories? No, and I don't have to agree okay. with every no, you're, aspect you're of fair. an ideology Fine. to argue for it. So, so then what part of CRT do you like? Because they call whiteness a toxin, black only dormitories. And if you want to talk about like ideal you know what's interesting so they bring up the word whiteness so if whiteness exists then blackness exists right and mexicanness asianness does that exist too right i mean it's this is what's wrong with america today is we are drowning in labels we want to put a label on everything Instead of focusing on the labels that have been true since the beginning of time, like you are God's child, you are a spiritual being, you are an American citizen, you are a male, a female, 
these are labels that have been timeless. And what's happening is we are causing mass confusion with people because everything has to have a label on it. It's fascinating. Logical or intellectual sloppiness, mm -hmm. the 1619 project was- I think it's very sloppy. Okay, we agree. Nicole Hannah-Jones. I think it's overstated and okay. I think some you're, of the you're parts being are inaccurate. Fair. Okay, good. Um, the parts of CRT that I think are most relevant and, you know, very factually, uh, you can, you know, what am I trying? I'm sorry, I, I just have to point this out again and I did say this in the beginning of the video. I, it's funny that you have two white people debating black issues, right? Which there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I, I don't think the color of your skin has anything to do with your um, ability or credibility to debate on issues when it comes to someone's culture. But I do find it funny that she's up there <laughs> thinking <laughs> that she knows and uh, I don't I don't believe she has any idea uh, what it's like to be black um, and uh, what the black culture is really all about and what our issues actually are and where they really come from. I think what she thinks she knows is what she's been told by a professor who more than likely probably isn't even black. And they're reading it out of some book that some professor think is a great theory or idea. Right. And that's what's happening in America is these students are not getting the actual reality information. They're getting a lot of theory. Right. They're getting a lot of uh, ideas that are coming from a place of victimization. And so they're not really given both sides of the story. OK, I want to make sure I understand. So so black people make up 13 percent of the American population. Oh, 1350, my favorite. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Why do they commit 55 percent of all the murders? Super great question. Um, it's basically a very complex intersection of race and um, economic status. It's mm. pretty well known that uh, minority people tend to be um, in a lower economic status because of discrimination. That so they then face. why don't poor Asians commit a lot of murders? Also a great question. Um, Asian people weren't originally brought to America on purpose like black people, and they weren't already present here like natives. Wait, so, I'm not so, finished, wait, so blacks murder because they were brought here 250 years no, ago? I would like to finish. Okay, just answer. It's very simple. B black. I am answering. No, I know, but you're you're not really. You're I am. Okay. Asian Americans so, okay. predominantly immigrate here for work reasons. They come from already wealthy countries. They're already wealthy when they get here. Crime is. She doesn't know what she's saying. I'm telling you guys, this is what they teach in in school. And then you wonder why people say college is a scam. You you wonder why younger people are so confused and so depressed. The ideas that are being injected into their minds, it's they're toxic. It's like a virus and it, it just it just baffles me you know the her, her response on this stuff she she doesn't even she's not even critically thinking about what she's saying it is primarily first by of all that's not people. true talk to anybody from Viet who's a Vietnamese anybody did you did your family come here wealthy no. yes not and wealthy, no okay. but not I'm yes not or saying no they come no. here okay the average I'm, Vietnamese does not come here wealthy I'm not okay I perhaps misspoke, not wealthy, but a lot of the, you know, you complain about it all the time. A lot of the immigration from countries that border us, right? It's it's sort of desperate people who are of a lower economic but status, right? And they're coming here for a better life. So, so two things. Number one, there's been more blacks that have legally immigrated to this country in the last 30 years than were ever brought as slaves. That's number one. Number okay. two, you still haven't answered the question. I'm, I'm trying but to. Wh why it's a complicated answer. B black people are only 13% really. of the population, yet they commit 55% of the murders. Why? Because black people tend to be in lower economic statuses because of complicated because of okay, no, no, this CRT. Is fine. This okay, let me answer it for her. The reason why, and there's actually a couple of reasons. Number one, the first reason is the nuclear family, meaning majority of black kids are growing up. And when I say majority, I'm talking 67% of black children today are growing up in a single parent household, which means what? And usually that single parent is the mother, which means what? That means that mother that woman, that female, decided to open her legs without getting married and got pregnant. And because she's not married, there's no actual official commitment. So just because she has a kid does not mean there's a commitment, does not mean that the man, the father will be there. Now, this is coming from someone who didn't have a father. So I know what I'm talking about here.
This is what's happening in our black community. And we don't want to talk about it because we want to blame the white man. We want to blame the system. The problem is boys are being raised by their mothers and not their fathers. And so those boys end up being raised by someone else on the streets. And you know what? You don't even have to take my word for it. Why don't we hear from someone who probably even knows more than I do? Let's play that huh? clip. You know, incarceration rates in America has been a problem, especially as opposed to minorities. And Roman delves into this, the, the issues around the, the legal system. Do you think we've made any headway? In the I legal think it's more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was in Chicago a couple of three, four weeks ago, and we saw these little kids on bikes with masks on the side of their head, like five or six of them. And the driver said, yeah, they're little yummies. I said, who? He said, little, little yummies. Look up, Google little yummy. Mm. Little yummy was an 11-year-old murderer. Wow. And you look at his picture, you'll see the head shot of him, and he's like this. And he got murdered at 11 by a 14-year-old. Wow. Who's doing life now and a 16-year-old. That makes no sense. You, you blame the system? Where was his father? Mm. Yeah. It starts in the house. It starts in the home. And yeah, well, well, my father got locked up. Well, where was his father? Yeah. You so, know, that, 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 like I, I did talk about my three closest friends, and they did, you know, 15 to 25, one did 28, this and that. I was the only one of the three that had a father in my life, even though my parents were together. But I still had a father who was a gentle man and a good example. Yeah. And they didn't. We can blame the system if we want. But they didn't lock any of us up at seven. Yeah. Okay, so you heard what he said, right? And this is why I said, before we get into the system, we got to look internally inside in our own home and see what's going on. And it's a trickle down effect, right? Right now, what's happening in the black community, single parent households. So either the daughters or the sons are not actually seeing the best way to actually get into relationships, to be married, to make sure there's abstinence, right? To make sure that the correct priorities about actually having a family are set, right? That, that doesn't exist. So as a result, our daughters and our sons, they pick up images, ideas, and habits from the outside world. And the outside world is corrupt. Let me ask you, let me ask you a question as no, my answer. answer. Go on. What percentage of blacks have a father around when they're raised? I'm mm. not sure. 20%. 80% so of blacks do not have a stable father around. It is the most predictable way to end up in prison, end up as a murderer or a criminal. And it's not a racism a problem. problem. It's not a white supremacy problem. It's a fact that black fathers impregnate women and they don't stay around with the women and that why? they have impregnated. Yeah, so you guys heard that. So, you know, the other side to what he's saying that I would probably say instead is, it's actually a result of black women getting pregnant without marriage. That's the problem. Because if she's married, he's more likely to be there. They're more likely to do it together. It's just the, that's what the numbers show. OK, and I do not believe a majority of black fathers are deadbeats because some people do. I don't believe that at all. Um, I think in every single culture, there are fathers who are not there. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with our just our cultures and marriage and how marriage has fallen off, you know? And so as we talk about this uh, wokeness that exists in colleges where you have these kids thinking they know everything about black issues and they can speak on them and they, and they know the ins and outs and they have no idea what, what they're talking about. They're just being told to think this way and to think that black people, that we are less than and we are, there, we are victims and we need help. And that's why you have this thing called white guilt where literally white people feel guilty for, I guess, that they're white and I'm black. I mean, it's just, the, the, it's a virus of the mind. We are all equal in the eyes of God, right? Made in his image. I don't look at you any differently than I look at myself. I don't care what the color of your skin is. And I don't need you looking at me any other way because I'm black. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. We're all going to the same place, right? Our body's going into the ground. We bleed the same color. So at the, at the end of the day, my, my, my lesson here that I want to impart upon you, and hopefully you are going out there and educating other people about this, is that uh, most people do not understand 
that black issues originate in the home, not the system. And the system is a cop out, an easy way to blame what's going on with black people because that's the way it's always been, right? That's what we've always said, right? It is not common to hear what Charlie Kirk had said, right? And so that's why I played you that Denzel Washington clip because for people in the back who may not have heard that, it's, it's, it's the nuclear family. And so I really hope that if you are a person out there, it doesn't matter color of your skin, but if you are black and you're watching this, take marriage very seriously, take family very seriously. Um, make the right decision. Don't start dating a guy and having unprotected sex if you have no intention of getting married. Don't do that to yourself because you become the same stat, right? You, because you become what we've been discussing uh, in, in this video and you're putting your child at risk. And again, I know this because I didn't have a father growing up and I would actually consider myself uh, the small percentage of people who turn out to be successful um, and not in the prison system. And I have got to really thank for, th thank for that. So, hey, thanks for checking out this video today. I want to know what you guys think about it. Uh, what, what do you guys think about this whole issue and how they're teaching these kids in, in the university about black issues and, and, and our culture? I want to get your guys' take on it and more in the comment section below. Uh, thank you for checking out the video today, and we'll see you in the next one.